by going game first. To the bottom left hand side here, our red Terran player, uh, our red Zerg player is true. And we do have him going up against the Blue Protoss player, Max Ed, who we just saw losing out 0 2 against Optimus. So, again, these games are replays at the moment, guys. They were played just earlier today uh, while we were casting some of the other matches that were going on in this group live. And uh, we're just going to try to see, you know, the goal is to catch every si cast every single series that happens in this tournament, even if some of them are from replays. We still have some of the replays from groups A and B to cast, actually. We're going to be doing that uh, maybe even on Saturday, depending on. Uh, what we do when I need to actually look at my schedule a little bit and just figure out what is happening, what is going on, etc. So we're going to just do a little bit of that whenever possible. As uh, we get into this in the early stages here, as you see this probe just harassed around initially, as you are going to be seeing Max it though. Begin to just expand back at home. Nexus on the way down. Gate Nexus core. We're going to be a very regular setup here in these early stages of the game. So looking to see how this goes, looking to see how the players are going to be opening over the next few moments. Let's see what happens. What's up, effects of box in the chat saying hi? Hello. Why are you saying hi? You've been here so long. You just want to say hi to me now? You can't just show up three hours in the stream after being here for most of it and be like, hi. Okay, okay, I guess you can. Hi, what's up? How's everyone doing in the chat? Hello, hello, hello. Let me know if you're out there. Let me know how you guys are doing. We did send out a sub replay pack last night, by the way, guys. 232 replays, I believe, uh, from the WCS qualifiers and more, as well as tournaments from this comp um, replays from this competition as well, from groups A and B, and even more on top of that as well. If you want to get your hands on all of those, there is available on our sub channel on Discord, so you need to be a subscriber to the stream. And then you can go onto our Discord server after about an hour or so. Once you've linked your Twitch and Discord accounts together, it will give you the uh, sub benefit, the sub channel access, and then you can access the sub channel and get those replays. So those are available. Exclamation mark Discord, Discord to join the server, and uh, yeah, go get them. I mean, again, if you want to get them still, you can you can do just uh, subscribe, and uh, not only will you be supporting the stream, but you'll get yourself a bunch of replay of labeled replays, which will help you get better at StarCraft too. They're pretty good replays. I mean, we've got a lot of good players in there. Obviously, some solo games, some Euphermal, Nurture, DNS. Uh, pretty much everyone we casted over the weekend. Uh, you know, Stefano and so on. So do go check those uh, replays out if you want to get your hands on them. You do just need to be a subscriber. And we will send out another replay pack before your subscription month is over. Um, there's going to be another replay pack probably in a week or two. And generally, we send out 500 to 600 replays a month. So it's a pretty good source of getting yourself replays. There's a Twilight Council open here from Maxed in these early stages, which allows him to go into the Dark Shrine and the Robotics Facility. So he sets up in towards this, as we do see the Stalker working its way through this overlord at the moment. Overlord does just get picked off, and actually Drew hits a little bit of a Supply Block from that. His next Overlord's on the way, but again, Supply Block for a few moments, and even as this Overlord pops, he uh, doesn't really have the freedom in Supply to start up much. Never overload popping down, so that is over, but again, just need those overloads a little bit earlier in the game. Just a slight mistake there, as Max Ed sets up with these extra gateways. Obviously, again, this is all looking to be very typical of the Dark Shrine, the DTs into Archon Drop. Very much so what we expect it to be for the moment. As we do see this uh, pylon just coming down on the left-hand side as well. This pylon coming down on the left-hand side, and again, the lair about to finish up. The Rotorin is about to finish up as well, so all of this coming through from True. As we are going to be seeing this Overlord continue to move down the south, and we are going to be seeing just a few of these uh, lava popping out of the third base. War Prism from Maxed coming out across the map. Obviously, again, the DTs going to be able to uh, jump on from that War Prism and then get into Archon mode and get into action if he wants to morph them into Archons right away. Sometimes the DTs alone can do damage, but if Overseer's already up, it doesn't look as though that's necessarily going to be the case. As Maxed, I'm going to put his first person view in the corner for you guys so you can just have a little bit of a look to see what he's looking at. You can see he's started up the third Nexus behind this attack as his Archon drop is getting ready to go. He comes in and lifts those up. And uh, behind it, I mean, an observer on the way. But Turi is just massing up Roaches and 49 drones. Roach speed on the way as well at the moment. There's two Archons heading towards the main base here, going to look to see what they can do. And True, he's going to have to start defending against this now as well. And uh, let's see how he's going to be able to try and fight against those Archons. As we do have them, well, again, trading well so far, but not really finding actual damage. Just getting some shots off, some health being brought lower. Uh, but nothing too crazy. Denmark is the best with the cheer 100 in the chat. Thank you so much for the cheer 100. 
Thank you so much for the 100 bits. Thank you for cheering and supporting the channel. Do appreciate it. Some love in the chat, guys. For Denmark is the best. You was the fairly dollar donation earlier in the stream as well. So thank you for even further support. Thank you very much. I'm all on the way up right now from Max. There's four more gateways coming through here. So four extra gateways on the way up as we are going to be seeing a couple of creep teamers being picked away at. Some roaches coming forward. So we are going to be seeing the Archons lifting up here and just pulling away from those few roaches. Fourth hatchery coming down from True. Nice for Max to still have these Archons on the map. Gives them a lot of freedom to continue harassing here, keeping True kind of pinned back a little bit. And it just stops True from really making use of his roach speed, which is already in the game, to maybe come across and just you know, potentially contest the third Nexus, right? The less Max Ed has to worry about attacks like that, the better of a time he's generally going to have in the game. And we are going to be seeing this uh, Wolf isn't taking a couple of shots from a Queen here, being targeted down, pushed away towards the center. So Warp Prism getting pushed around a little bit. Another couple of DTs just finished warping in. Another Immortal's coming out in a moment or two. Maxed has quite an army back at home, by the way. Yeah, you know, considering he's got two Archons here, if you add this to this army, that's four Archons and triple Immortal very soon. A few sentries. As Charge comes up, I wonder how aggressive Maxed wants to be. I wonder if he's going to try to move through the center of the map or what the plan might be as we see the Spire is just about halfway done here from Drew. And the Lurker Den is coming down on the left-hand side as well. Again, just this uh, War Prism moving around with a couple of Archons inside. And they are just going to continue to loop around and see where they can go. Spire will be finishing up in a moment or so from True. That Lurker Den just about being halfway done. And still just going to see that Prism with a couple of Archons, seeing what else they can get up to at the moment. Denmark is the best with another tier 100. Remove the delay! I wish I could, but to remove the delay we have to reset the stream, and it doesn't really make sense to reset the stream. Uh, midstream. So, unfortunately, we have to have the delay, even though we're just casting from a couple of replays here to wrap things up today. That's a little bit of a shame, but it's just the way it is. The day someone in invents a way to kind of remove stream delay on the fly would be amazing. It would actually be a really cool int uh, feature from Twitch. The problem is not a lot of people really use stream delay, and even on top of that, the amount of people that need to kind of have stream delay for part of a stream and then maybe remove it for afterwards is even lower. So, a little bit, uh... A little bit of a shame, but it is what it is. We do see this prism dropping back down, and have a couple of archons. They could definitely get something done towards this uh, fourth base here once again. A few mutas are coming out from True. Again, a very kind of True flavored way of playing the game. Again, mutas out, looking towards a couple of base trading scenarios. And that is actually what we're heading towards right now, because Max said. Well, he's got Roaches heading towards the top side as well as Middleisks, but he is coming through the middle. So Max said, let's see what he can get done with this here as these Roaches approach the front. They're going to go straight on through. We're going to see the Robo Facility is going to get picked off right now. And we are going to see the Cannon. It's going to be in a little bit of trouble as well, but doesn't actually go down just yet. The Mir is already in the main base, but Stalkers here are going to fight against them. Maybe the Roaches can protect. A few of these Roaches to the left-hand side are going to pick their way through what they can, but Shield Barriers are helping out quite a lot too. The Mirrors are mostly going down, and honestly, Max said it's cleaning up pretty nicely so far, both on the third base and in the main. Max said is being cleaned up all over the place, actually. He's not making much progress at all here. Across, uh, sorry, he's cleaned up quite uh, reasonably, and he is making progress on this side. On the fourth base, True takes some damage. Right, well, Max said pulling back there worked out for him in the end. Not really much done by True. A lot of roaches and especially the mutas given up. I mean, this was six mutas that really didn't do anything at all. We're talking about one probe loss. I mean, that's not even from those mutalisks. So, this really was uh, very nicely done as we see this war prism. Max said continuing to wander around, continuing to see what else he can get up to now. The roaches of True all the way up to the top side will be taking this watchtower for the moment and. This is a war prism with a couple of Archons inside of it, coming back towards the center as well. Big push forwards from Max Ed right here as he gets ready to attack on forwards. But you see the Roaches coming in and they will be able to take down this Nexus. That's a straight up kill. So a kill on that Nexus right there and we are going to see the Roaches continuing through. Base trade time once again. Lurkers have to cancel here from True. He does have some spine crawlers setting up, realizing that he might go in towards a base trade base uh, focus scenario. And that is where he will need that. As, oh, some Lurkers to the top side though, they are here. But there is detection. That Sport Observer is going to allow him to get rid of every single Lurker. So the Lurkers going down, they didn't even do that much because these units are pretty tanky and only four Lurkers doesn't break through the Archon Shields quickly enough here. Dark Shrine will go down. Roach is still pushing towards the third base as well. Maxed's going to be taking damage on all fronts. Does he recall home? Does he just walk home? 
He's walking back towards the middle. Looks as though he's pulling back home. He sends a few units forward, and he will actually find himself a couple of roaches and a lurker here before it burrows. And now he has to be very careful. His lurker's burrowed, and he has to back away a little bit further. Max said is still on 48 probes to 45 drones. The economy here from both is still viable. And if Max said holds his nexus alive, he's going to be on free base against free base still, which is kind of pretty fine for him. Drew pulls back with some of these ravages right here, still doing damage in the main with these roaches. A few more zealots are on the way up here once again. Just continuing to come on through, and we are going to be seeing a couple of these archons. Just going to continue to come on in. I mean, these roaches are now going to be going down. This is some heavy losses from Drew. He's going to be losing a lot here in the end, so... A lot of roaches fall, and maybe Maxed has an army to go across the map and do something else with. It's going to be difficult, because there's a lot of lurkers. There's a lot of spine crawlers. A lot more roaches pulling all the way back towards the bottom left hand side. Max is going to try and push through the center once again and try and get something a little bit extra done. He needs to do something right now, right? I mean, he's on this army which has a few Archons and Stalkers and Immortals, but... He, if he doesn't do... Well, does he need to get something done? He's actually on 58 probes against 44 drones. This warping in the main base isn't great because he just there's just so many units in position. Maybe Maxed can just sit back, maybe, you know, get rid of the 4th base here where there isn't a set of spine crawlers. And as he gets rid of the 4th, then 3 base against 3 base, he's ahead on workers. This looks kind of okay for Maxed. I think the worst thing he could do right now is potentially pushing down in towards the spine crawler wall or in towards the lurkers. That could go very badly wrong for him, so... He needs to be a little bit careful of that. A couple of mutilists right now will push back this war prism in towards the main base. And of course, Baz will try and catch the prism as well, but don't quite manage to make that happen. So the war prism is just about able to survive here, as we are going to be seeing another few zealots currently just on the way up. And Max said he really wants to make something, you know, he really wants to commit to this, it seems. He wants to go in. I feel like he could just take a fourth base and macro up himself, but he seems to feel as though he needs to attack on forwards, and that could be messy. There's a lot of spi uh, spines here. Lurkers as well. Only three lurkers in this position. I guess a lot of them are on the high ground. Let's see if it's going to be enough as pushing forwards. I mean, look how much damage those spines are tanking. Multiple immortal shots. The Archon's getting pulled up there as well, and Max is just going to tap out of the game. That was not an attack that worked out. That was a shame, because honestly, this was going very well. 1-2-0. So... Up 1-0, to let's see if he can uh, keep this up in the top left-hand side of the map. We do have our red Zerg player from Storm Gaming. This is true. And on the other side of the map, we do have uh, the blue Protoss player from Invictus Gaming, Maxed. When is the amateur stream by Bay Street TV? So I believe the BTSL amateur is tonight as well. I believe that's uh, probably about 3 hours and 45 minutes from now. Um, once the Base Trade TV stream goes live, it's about it's usually starts an hour after that, so you'll still have an hour to sign up, etc. And all the rest of it, so... Yeah, we'll be casting the finals of that as well after the Base Trade group, or the BTSL group. Anyways, we get ourselves set up and uh, ready to go. As we go into game number two. Waiting to see if Max Ed can tie this series up one to one. Probe hops up in towards the main base here, so coming up here we're going to be seeing an extractor pool on the way down after the hatchery, so hatch gas pool opening. I'm just going to see one drone pulled in and starting to nibble away to that probe a little bit. This overload of true continues to come down to the south side. As we are here on acid plant. Don't know why I zoomed in for that necessarily, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we're here on acid plant with true. Going down to the bottom right to see what's going on. Looks like Max just wants to keep an eye on whether True's going to be taking the third hatchery already. Which makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, checking out to see whether this third hatch is coming down or not. It definitely uh, makes a lot of sense. We see the Cyber Nexus go on the way for Max Ed too. The Nexus on its way down also is going to be finishing up very shortly. As we see a pylon finishing in the main base and just a few more probes popping out here for Max Ed. Link speed on the way up in the upper left hand side. And the Stargate from Max Ed will drop on down as well. So we're just dropping down the Stargate. Obviously last game he went straight into Twilight and the Robo for the DT Shrine, the Archon Drop. The very standardized or the original build that brought Archon Drops into fashion. 
Now we see the Stargate instead, and by going to this Stargate, we're going to be uh, seeing it about halfway done, looking to see what will be next. Which is the best sneak, asks Adzi. Well, personally, I like the blue raspberry one, um, but uh, Arius was saying the Stealth Edition is pretty good. I don't know anyone who's had the cherry one yet, but uh, I'm not personally a fan of cherries, so that's why I took blue raspberry, personally. And he's going to be seeing the uh, Metabagal Boost all the way up right now from True. As you do see a third hatchery coming down on the left-hand side. So he's going up in towards this third base creep pushing forwards right now from our Zerg player. And again, this Oracle from Maxed just on the way out, on the way through here at the moment. And uh, again, an adept in the center. Just looking to see what's up. Look, just looking to see what is going on. Oracle will be finishing in a moment or two, and we will see it coming across the map here. So Max had already looked to try and get a bit of damage done. And uh, we do see a Phoenix on the way behind this Oracle initially, so... Kind of just what we expected to be. We have been seeing more Phoenix than Oracle, just to kind of get rid of this Overlord a bit faster, and to be able to throw down your tech a little bit sooner. But, I mean, Oracle Phoenix, I actually think that means a second Oracle, usually. Because if you go uh, Phoenix Oracle, it means that the Overlord's going to be dead in a little bit faster. And if the Overlord's dead a little bit faster, you're going to be able to, as this Oracle gets so low, if the Oracle's dead a little bit, if the Phoenix Overlord's dead a bit faster, you can throw down your Templar, uh, your Twilight Council and Robo a bit quicker without it being scouted. And that's generally what the Phoenix is there for, to get rid of that scouting information, right? So, by denying that scouting early, you can tech up faster. By denying the information a bit later, it means you're going to tech a little bit later, in which case you can afford to get the second oracle first, which isn't really much of a given, you know, which isn't much of a telltale sign as to what's going on in the game. There is now the Twilight Council and the Robo. No forge just yet. But the Twilight Robo obviously opens up a lot of opportunities as to what can happen next. You know, we can talk about charge upgrade, we can talk about a warp prism. We can talk about Templar Archives coming down too for that kind of very typical charge lot arc on mid-game that we see so very frequently in the EVP matchups. And his extra gateways just continue to come on up here, the Robo Facility. We'll be finishing very soon. And there's Alton and Adept coming over to this left hand side. They're able to work their way through a few of those Zerglings already. I was done on the way up, 18 more Zerglings coming through. This is a lot of gates, by the way, for no third base just yet. Two more in production with four finished, so six in total. It's not a ton of gateways, but there is the third Nexus, so that is going to start coming up right now. True on 57 drones is starting to make a lot of Ling Hydra. He's got his Groove Spines on the way through. That's an upgrade which will help the Hydras a lot. And some Ling's coming across the map, as you would sometimes expect this time around. Obviously, it gives you the opportunity to come in towards the third base and maybe even look for a cancel there in the near future. Meanwhile, we actually do see a couple of oracles trying to get damage done in the main, but Queens and a Spore get rid of one, and the second one taking a little bit of damage. Big warp in here, but a couple of units already going down before the warp in was finished up, so nice little pick off already. As we do see those feelings peeling off away to the side, the oracle's coming back home, but doesn't really have much energy to do much. And again, another few hydras also just currently on the way out. And that is that charge upgrade, just about halfway done, a couple of pylons coming down. And this Oracle pushing those Zerglings off to the side as well. Two Archons do start to morph on in, and the Zealots just going to be gathering themselves together with these couple of Archons. I mean, all of these units together now should be able to get a little bit of something done as Maxed pushes it on the left-hand side. Problem is, I guess, there's a lot of Lings and Hydras. True is stuck at 59 workers, and he's only been making units for a little while now, so he has so much damage output onto this army, and you can just see those Zealots, they melt. Now the Archons just lift up and get out of there, and Maxed wasn't able to do much with this. I don't know if True, after taking down an attack like that, can just go across the map. Still two Archons in the main base to deal with, but as long as he can deal with those at some point, these units going across, I mean, what's over here? A couple of Archons morphing in and a mortal just now starting a Corona Boost? Feels as though that might be just a little bit too little too late here for Maxed. And coming in right here, trying to harass still, trying to make something happen. But he's going to have to deal with this army of true, which is starting to come across the center of the map. A lot of Hydralists here are going to try and push on in, and well, already just talking down a couple of Zealots. I mean, again, what's here? Really not much at all. A couple of Archons are going to go down very, very quickly. And as his Archons go down, well, I mean... Maxed. He just has no units at all. He has absolutely nothing to, to defend against that here. That is going to be GG. True takes the series. Two games to zero against